Yeah, my name is Holger Spiegel. I'm a plant biotechnology scientist at the Fraunhofer IME in Aachen. Um, Fraunhofer is the largest uh, non-profit research organization in Germany and we uh, address more or less all different types of science from engineering to life science and our institute is um, specialized on life science and uh, with a strong focus on plant biotechnology. And I'm happy that I have the opportunity to present some of our work and molecular farming in general in the context of the Science Week. Yeah, I think the um, part that plant molecular biology or especially plant molecular farming plays in the context of the big science puzzle is uh, its contribution to uh, recombinant protein expression expression uh, of proteins that we can use for different purposes and uh, especially where other technologies that have been developed uh, to do this job are not efficient enough, not fast enough or not cheap, cheap enough to fulfill or to solve the problems that we want to address by this. And there are many of these problems, especially in health and also in world nutrition. We are in a critical point uh, in different respects. One critical point, of course, is the, um, the timelines that we usually need to develop safe vaccines. And um, this probably cannot be shortcutted uh, much better than we try it now. And we are also at a critical point when it comes to the production of protein-based therapeutics or diagnostics, because here we have we have, uh, in general, we really have um, capacity problems with biotechnological production facilities and also with the supply of media and consumables. And this is all uh, um, emphasized during the crisis when in certain countries production capacities get lower and the, the general trade between uh, uh, producing countries and the, the, the scientific countries that produce the reagents is probably not, not completely in place. The duty of the science is to provide solutions for therapy, solutions for uh, immunization and also for uh, detection of the pathogen to, uh, to allow better control and for as as much as you need uh, vaccines that are probably recombinant protein based, you need uh, diagnostic reagents that will be recombinant proteins representing important parts of the virus to uh, develop rapid diagnostic assays, for example, to monitor antibody responses in patients. And this is um, a scenario where we have to act very quickly and uh, we have to, and we need capacities that are not used otherwise to uh, develop and produce these molecules. And uh, this is a critical point because such a pandemic with uh, needs on both sides, vaccines of reagents ha has not been addressed in the, in the industrialized time for us as scientists. And so it is very important to look and, and, and engage all technologies that we can think of to solve the problems we have with recombinant protein production and assay development. And I think that molecular farming will be able to make a big contribution, if not to this crisis, at least to the next pandemic when we have learned uh, uh, what we missed this time. Yeah, molecular farming is uh, a set of technologies that we can use to make plants produce recombinant proteins that we need for medical or industrial applications. Molecular farming is an interesting uh, technology because it helps us to rapidly produce important vaccines and uh, therapeutics uh, for, uh, for the future challenges in global health. Yeah, given you use the right system and you have the capacities to use it, we can produce sufficient amount of diagnostic reagents for, for example, pandemic monitoring within two to three weeks. The 
the uh, high speed of plant molecular farming setups results from the possibility to use transient transfection technologies also at a larger scale. So mammalian cells are also capable to be applied in transient expression systems, but only at very small scales, where we talk about, about uh, culture volumes of one liter or so, whereas in plant systems where you use agro-infiltration, you can use 50 or 100 kilograms of plant material and quickly uh, use them for production by transient transfection. And the scale is the biggest advantage in terms of fast transient systems in molecular farming. We have a process that can be used to produce weekly about 1 million doses of diagnostic reagent that could be used in antibody assays that uh, measure the antibody type or coronavirus specific antibody type in patients. So um, that was a process that we established over three months, very early when corona started. So we should, should very much learn from the current situation that we have to uh, decentralize uh, supply of reagents and uh, recombinant proteins in a way that we are not affected by pandemics just because just certain countries produce reagents or consumables and other countries do the science, but we should look for a, a better distribution of capacities and, 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 um, and supply. I think the, the biggest contribution molecular farming can make to this and more, more importantly to coming pandemics is that molecular farming with its flexible, fast and uh, robust production systems for recombinant proteins will be able to quickly deliver urgently needed reagents and therapeutics given we take the opportunity now to learn that we have to work on systems that are smaller and modular and that can be transported uh, to countries. As if you imagine the Ebola crisis, which was really uh, more or less localized in sub-Saharan Africa, where you have big problems with infrastructure. And in this case, it would have been really good to have uh, modular systems that can make quickly make vaccines or or, or diagnostic reagents, probably on ships or in containers. And the transient plant expression technology that we have currently is optimally suited to put them in smaller modules and enable production uh, in a very simple and decentralized way. And the only problem we have to overcome on the way to this is to um, work on uh, faster and more efficient methods to uh, provide safe products by adjusting the regulations we, uh, we have for uh, good manufacturing product production as a GMP compliant uh, procedures we use there. At the moment we are in the phase of molecular farming 2.0 or 3.0 because transient systems have, have emerged where we can mo much more quickly uh, generate proteins, where we can make more proteins because of the viral replicon based things and it was, it's also a, a, a question of selection of the right niche. If you don't take the right niche to establish the, the technology far enough to, to convince industry to use it also for as a real alternative to mammalian cells, for example, you have to make a critical mass, a critical mass of applications. So you have to, enough processes that are established by the regulatory authorities and enough, uh, enough uh, um, infrastructures that work on this so that, that the industry can rely on, on uh, uh, infrastructure they can rent or use for production once they have established a process. And one of the niches that molecular farming needs, more or less, even if it's a, a set, that uh, effect is a pandemic where the normal systems and the normal capacities somehow uh, touch their limits regarding time or capacity constraints. And this is when it gets more obvious that we have to invest maybe in alternative systems like plants 
because we may need them in, 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 in situations where we cannot uh, clarify or, or, or manage everything with the existing capacities and the existing systems. And molecular farming is an expression technology that has not at all reached its total potential in the context of recombinant protein expression. That is what I believe because also of the big varieties we have there and I think we can be pretty confident that in the future we will see more molecular farming products. The hurdle to overcome is the, the, the touching or the, the so passing of a critical mass because the critical mass we, we cannot move further with molecular farming if we don't get products into the market. We have to show that many products with different types of plant systems can su successfully enter the market and go through the regulatory process. And the pandemic now is a chance to put the public emphasis on these systems because they, because they are rapid and good, well scalable, are a, 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 a really serious alternative to the other capacities, where we might have run into problems that we have not foreseen, like sudden, sudden lack of uh, supply for certain consumables or media components. Yeah, what we need is um, entrepreneurs, I would say, that are, uh, um, have enough courage to, to, to go from, the, from a development towards a product and to believe in the technology. And it would also help a lot these entrepreneurs if we, we get some uh, public funding to uh, work on more capacities, more technologies and more infrastructure. We have to uh, really put a push on the on the regulatory side, so where that we can establish safe procedures that are much faster than the existing ones. And that's especially difficult for plant molecular farming because we don't have a big record of GMP production uh, uh, and GMP process development. So it will be more difficult, but it will be worth it because once we have established it, it could it could help to solve pandemic problems decentralized very fast. Yeah, my plans for the Berlin Science Week are to take you behind the scenes of molecular farming and uh, take you into greenhouses, into fighter chambers, show you how we transform plants and give you the opportunity to interactively ask questions about the technologies to get a deeper, enter, a deeper insight and understanding and um, hopefully in the end uh, go home with a, with a very good understanding of molecular farming and its contributions to uh, global health and probably also to uh, pandemic crisis like the one we are experiencing right now.